In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the God Particle from Cradle Apps. It's a plugin for the Mixbus. You can put it anywhere, really. But I'm going to put it on the Mixbus and see how it affects my mix and if it's going to have me rethink my current Mixbus chain. So you often see mixers using plugins like EQ, tape machines, compressors, limiters on the mix bus. So should you use them as well? Well, yeah, why not? The thing is, though, should you use one plugin to do all that or should you apply all the processing separately? Let's have a look at the God Particle and see if that can answer the question for us. Jason Joshua and Cradle Apps designed the God Particle with the mix bus in mind. It's set up right from the outset with Jason Joshua's signature sound. So all you have to do are hit a few target pointers and you should be kind of in the right ballpark to keep mixing and to get that final sound. I'm not going to say you're going to get Jason Joshua's sound, but you're certainly going to be starting from the same starting point as he does. So depending on the state of the tracks, how they've been recorded, what genre of music you're mixing, you're going to get different results. So let's have a look at the God Particle a bit closer. Let's look at the GUI, see how easy it is to use and to operate. And then let's listen to what it sounds like. So here on my mix bus, you can see that I've got a compressor. I've got another compressor. I've got some EQ. I've got a tape machine. I've got another EQ, I've got a multiband, I've got magic source from the Oxford inflator and then finally I've got an L2 from Waves with a, a little bit of gain applied to actually get my mix up to a decent level to be able to send to a client for them to reference against a commercial track. Now the reason I use plugins like this, these analog emulations of, of classic gear, Neve, Fairchild. Uh, the Better Maker is a slightly different beast. It's a modern take on a Pultec EQ and sounds a little bit cleaner. Operates much the same way, similar curves, uh, but not quite as coloured as the uh, Pultec. Uh, the Studer, classic tape machine for tape compression, for some harmonic saturation. And then the curve bender again, another analog EQ that can handle some mid side processing as well as stereo. So th these are all kind of classics. They've all got their own tone and character. Character being the key word. Oxford Inflator's got bags of character, and I'm using that quite heavily in this mix bus. This setting uh, is a, a setting that Chad Blake uses in a lot of his mixes and I tried it out and liked it. And the thing is, it looks pretty extreme at 100% effect. But once you mix into these plugins right from the start, then you can kind of compensate for that. And if things start to get a little bit loud, you can always drop the output down. I certainly do get a good volume boost from the Oxford Inflator, as I do from the L2. In this case, it's the Waves L2. Sometimes I use the Fab Filter L2, and then other times I'll use Another limiter, if I fancy a change, PSP Xenon limiter is, an, is a choice that I often go to. So for me on the mix bus, what matters is character, tone, vibe, all that kind of good stuff. I don't do top down mixing really. Um, I do start mixing with plugins open on my mix bus, which is something that attracted me to the God Particle plugin because I'd seen Jason Joshua talking about it and him saying that he mixes through it right from the outset. And it's the only plugin on his mix bus. So that kind of appealed to me. The ability to be able to minimise my mix bus is appealing. Uh, so, yeah, I thought I'd really like to give it a go. So I reached out to Cradle Apps and they very kindly sent me a copy to try out. So taking a look at the God Particle then, you can see that it has an input stage and it has an output stage here. It's got some EQ here. It's got this large control here uh, right in the centre of the plugin that you can't miss. And that is the character parameter. And then we've got gain reduction here. This is a multiband compressor. And then we have a limiter that's currently set 
five dBs. So you're going to get five dBs again as soon as you put this on. You're also going to get a bit of an EQ curve applied. This, although these all say zero dB, the EQ curve isn't flat out of the box. So you are going to get that um, sort of shaping that Jason Joshua uses in his mixes. So then out of the multiband compressor section here, we'll go into the limiter. And then you've got a final output section where you can really kind of fine tune your uh, the levels going out of this plugin. The side chain here, you've got internal and external. So that means you can use it anywhere in your mix. You don't have to use it only on the mix bus or just on the mix bus for that matter. You can use it on group buses, you can use it on track level. And it just this use of the side chain or implementation of the side chain makes it really useful. Then along the top, we've got the presets. It doesn't come with any presets other than default. Uh, so don't go looking there for uh, any sort of inspiration. The default preset is Jason Joshua's preset. That's his starting point for every single mix. And that's what you get. There is talk of more presets being issued in the future from mix engineers of various uh, types and music styles. So you'll be able to add those presets and work within the sonic profiles of mixers such like Dave Pensado and who knows who else. What you can also see on this interface are these green boxes. These are target markers. This is what you need to be aiming for. In order to find the sweet spot in this plugin, the idea is that you uh, get your input into this green box here. You use the EQ here so that you can make sure that you hit the target markers here in the multiband section. And then you've got these on off. You can switch off the limiter. You can switch off the character parameter and you can even switch off the EQ. So it's pretty flexible. But do bear in mind as soon as you add this to your mix bus, you're not getting a flat EQ profile. There is a curve and also it's going to bump the level by 5 dBs. One of the ways that I employ all the different uh, plugins that I've currently got on my mix bus is to add little bits of gain all at various different stages. So it's not just one plugin that I'm doing all the heavy lifting with, like a limiter, for example. I'm adding 1 dB here, 2 dBs there, um, half a dB here, 3 dBs there, just so that um, I'm spreading the requirement for gain across different plugins. And I find that that way you get a much more transparent result and less um, kind of processed sounding. Jason Joshua, of course, is a very well known Grammy winning mix engineer and music producer. And he's worked with amazing artists like Jay-Z, uh, Beyonce, Usher, and uh, just a whole host of different artists. And it's interesting to know that this is what he uses, regardless of the style of music he's mixing. So I thought it'd be pretty interesting to try this today on a rock mix to see how it holds up. If you go to the Cradle Apps website, there's not an awful lot of information about the plugin. I'm not quite sure exactly what it does uh, under the hood, but looking at the controls, you can kind of make a rough guess that we're looking at EQ, we're looking at harmonic saturation, multiband compressing, and limiting. So we're going to get some sort of enhancement with depth, stereo field, width, uh, warmth, that sort of thing. And with this character dial at the very front here, you can dial in the right amount that's, that feels good to you for your mix once you've got these target parameters set up. You don't obviously have to stick to the target parameters. At the end of the day, it's what your ears tell you and that's what you should go with. So let's have a listen to a mix. We'll listen to it through my mix bus chain currently and then we'll have a listen to it through the God Particle and see if we can get the two to sound the same or maybe one to sound better. This mix here, I've got, it's just standard bass, drums, guitars and vocals. So a pretty straightforward, straight up front rock mix. I've just used the faders to pull down uh, the levels of some of the instrument groups that were coming in quite hot. So it wouldn't normally ha wouldn't be how I would normally uh, prepare a mix. I would tend to do it more at the clip gain level rather than with the faders. But just for speed making this video, I decided just to use the faders. I've got everything switched off. All the plugins in this in this uh, template are all off and bypassed other than 
uh, just some effects plugins, uh, parallel compression plugins. Um, I've got all the drums going through a drum bus. You do see here I've got some subgroups, but I'm not going to use them for this video. I'm just I've routed all the drums through to the drum bus because what I want to do really is have minimal processing on the way to the mix bus so that we, so that we can really um, assess what the God Particle and my mix bus is doing. I'm going to turn off that there, that EQP1A on the drum bus. So everything is fairly flat. There is there's the, an odd plugin, EQ plugin on here and there, but that's it really. All my subgroups like the vocal bus, the drum bus, the bass bus, the guitar bus and their parallel processing and effects all meet at these all buses here. These are how I describe these as mini mix buses. So this all bus is like a mini mix bus for the drums. So everything meets here. It gets funneled to this point with regard to the drums. So all the subgroups, like kicks, snares, toms, rooms, overheads, symbols, etc. And then the parallel compression gets rooted here and the effects get rooted here all kind of in separate branches, just so that I've got more flexibility further up in the mix for if I want to start um, applying effects and sends and things in different places. But anyway, more on that in another video. So all drums, all percussion, all bass, all guitars, all keyboards. We've not got any keyboards, uh, not got any strings or brass in this mix, so I might as well hide and make those inactive. Um, and even backing vocals. I don't think I've got any backing vocals rooted. I've just kept all the vocals going through the main vocal bus. There's some very basic panning that I've employed on the guitars. Just really quickly, as I quickly listen to this, just to make it sound a little bit more interesting, not quite so uh, flat and boring up the middle for you. Uh, but that's it. All really well recorded. As I say, just use the faders to get the levels down to something that's not quite so loud and blowing up the mix bus. So looking at my, uh, let's get here, looking at my mix bus then, um, last thing I suppose, I've got a, a, a master fader here that I use to just pull down the level of the whole mix if I need to, including effects, including parallel processing. So the mix doesn't change. I just am able to drop this level com coming into my mix bus if I feel as though everything is getting a bit too hot. So on this mix bus, yeah, I've got an Eve 33609. It's got a little bit of bump there for the first notch of gain. So there's a little bit of a, a gain bump there. I don't use this heavily. I, I'm looking really at one to two dBs of compression at the most here. So I'd rarely take this threshold past kind of four plus four there. I'm getting character. I'm getting Neve sound. Um, he's a very familiar sound for a lot of rock records. And of course, I'm getting that analog harmonic circuitry vibe from this plugin. Next up, I've got Fairchild. That's all, just all about tone. Very little, if any compression takes place here, it's just for that gluey, uh, warm, round tone that Fairchild's in part. I've got here Better Maker, which is a Pultec, uh clone, I guess, but it is much cleaner. Same characteristics in the way of curves, I believe, um, but just much cleaner and not quite so coloured as the original Pultex. Then the tape, um, I love using tape. I love tape, um, the way that it handles uh, and helps transient uh, breakthrough through into the into the mix bus so that's helping me there uh, I also love using it as a tone control so selecting different tape types to help balance any recordings that may come through to me that are a little bit too bright or a little bit dark that that kind of thing I can come here at the mix bus level and get really quick get into the right kind of tonal area that that I want for that mix and then I'm in Repro here, so um, I use the Repro EQ to also fine tune the low frequencies um, the, and the high frequencies. I've got a curve bender. This is where I typically apply a smiley face EQ. 
I can do it with the, the better maker as well as it on its way into the tape machine. But I've got options here because I can use this in mid side. Following that, I have a multi band. It just helps to smooth out the mix, just helps things sit more evenly, stops that problem where you can get sometimes get certain elements popping out, jumping out of the mix. This just kind of is very gently just massages this all the all the instruments and just keeps them um, sounding locked in place. It's never really it's not doing anything in the way of uh, limiting. It's just literally uh, using the uh, the multiband aspect of this uh, limiter. Then the Oxford Inflator, as I said before, looks scary to start with. Looks like I'm using loads of it, but I'm not um, because I mix into it. So I'm kind of compensating for for it. I think if you were to put that on at the end of your mix, after you've done everything and it's sounding great and then whack it up to 100%, I think then it would be like, ah, but... Uh, but I don't get that because I mix into it. And then, yeah, the L2. Sometimes I'll swap this out for a FabFilter L2. Um, I'll sometimes use the PSP Xenon, which I like as because uh, that can sound really clean. So it's just really what I fancy trying out on the day and what works and what, what might not. So I just have options in my back pocket. L2 is a very well-known sound, a lot of pop records have the L2 sound. So let's see how we get on today. Let's play this mix then, uh, just so you get a feel for it. It's a rock mix. Let's go from this um, second verse here so that you can get an idea on how it sounds. And what we're doing is, apart from the, uh, the only plugins instantiated are very basic EQs with nothing happening and uh, my mix bus. So let's listen to how that sounds. very dry um, but that's it that's the start of the mix it could be a static balance so let's uh, let's investigate and see what's going on shall we you can just get an idea if I just open this the Neve plugin and just if you have a look at the gain reduction here when I play the track you'll see it's um, probably hardly doing anything at all so it's not really doing compression at this stage it's more of a tonal character that it's adding You can hear it's add, it's adding width as well. There is the volume, the little volume bump that I explained earlier. But you can see and hear the vibe that that plugin is um, is imparting. And the idea is that if I get this um, when I start a mix and that's not moving, that you know the gain reduction meter is not moving, then I'm good to go. Because as I start building the mix, the levels are going to rise a little bit, and then we will start to see a tiny bit of movement here. But really, I only ever go for about one dB of compression. And that then sets the gain um, for the following plugins. And so I never really change the settings on those other than obviously the parameters on the EQ plugins um, as need be. So that's my mix bus. Let's have a look at this God Particle then, see what that is actually doing. Let's hear what the God Particle does. <laughs> So that's what it does straight out of the box. Let's try and do a quick A-B comparison here between my plugin chain and uh, the God Particle, just so you, you can kind of get an idea on the tonal characteristics between the two. Mm 
So first of all, I'll play God Particle and then I'll switch over to my chain. Okay, so what I'm hearing there is it definitely sounds darker than my my plugins have have added at this stage, and uh, certain things aren't kind of they sound a little bit recessed, like the snare and the voice, the vocal, the main vocal. So let's have a look at the, this plugin and see what we uh, need to do. I said at the start we're talking about these target boxes, these green boxes that we need to kind of dial the settings into to get to the sweet spot for this particular plugin. So looking at the input, that looked to be good, strong and healthy. I don't think I need to dial anything in there or pull it back. It looked as though it was about the right level. So let's play the track then. And what I'll do is adjust these EQ parameters so that over here in the gain reduction in the multiband, you can see the targets being hit as I dial up the parameters here. Okay, so I feel as though I'm needing to add quite a lot of EQ here to get these parameters, these targets hit. And I guess that's just the nature of the recording. It's always going to change. It's always going to be different. Um, it did made, make me wonder whether perhaps I do need to uh, increase the input a little bit. So maybe I'll try that. So I think that's sounding better. Try not to be fooled by the fact that it is louder. So there is that to bear in mind. Maybe I am being fooled. But I've got the, the high parameter up here full, 6 dB. And the way I understand it from what I've heard about this plugin is that really you shouldn't be seeing any action here in this target box apart from the odd flick. It just lights up occasionally. If it's lighting up all the time or even going beyond that, then your mix is way too bright and it needs to come back. I find that a little bit confusing, to be honest, given that the low and the mid are so obvious. I, I just wonder whether tweaking things inside the, the plugin here so that the resolution was a bit stronger, if you like, so that we do see some action here when um, using this high parameter. So, but anyway, that's just my initial thought. Now, with this gain lift now, let's just switch over now. I want to check my mix bus, uh, see how it's sounding and just check the level. So I'm definitely hearing more 
lower mid being introduced here that has been really quick and easy to dial in i'm not sure that it's uh, sounding quite how i want it to sound it might be a little bit too much so this is where we can use this character control here to pull it back to get the right blend for our mix <laughs> quite liking that around about 70 just pulling back on these mid tones um, and the low end as a starting point I'm still hitting the target seems to be quite a wide threshold to get your uh, numbers right into these into this uh, these target boxes so there's a lot of room for maneuver let's check again now just want to see what my mix bus chain is doing again <laughs> So it's definitely more high end, but that could, you know, typically be down to the fact that that's how their tracks have been recorded. Uh, I'm not boosting any high end anywhere. That's how the recording is coming through. So the God Particle is definitely a darker sounding plugin in that term, in that respect. <laughs> Just playing around with the controls a bit more. Uh, the snare is sounding really fat, so I just want to control that so it doesn't get a bit, it doesn't get too much. So I'm just playing around here to get the right kind of tone. <laughs> Okay, I still feel like it's a little bit dark. So what you could do, and there's no reason why you can't, but you can certainly employ an EQ plugin before. And I would tend to use a cleaner EQ, a digital EQ, uh, one that has no kind of tone or characteristic that it imparts in that in that respect. So something like the Pro Q here, very clean sounding, just to add a bit of a shelf to the high end, see whether that brings things nearer to what I'm I'm experiencing on my mix bus. <laughs> You can see even with that boost that I've done there, three and a half dB shelf 8K, I'm still not hitting this this uh, target box here on the high frequency. I wanna treat you like a renegade. I actually really like that. I really like what it's doing. Um, obviously, the vocal at that that part there is a little bit too loud because it is unmixed. Um, but once I got this the EQ in here, I actually quite like the way that the the perception of, of width within the mix had really opened up and depth as well. So I really do do like what that's doing, which is really nice. So it just goes to show that I can get a, a good way towards a final sound if you like using just the one plugin versus using the seven or eight that i'm currently using on the mix bus so this that's going to save me with cpu if that's an issue uh, it's going to help if you are 
working with stems and you've got to send stems off. It can be a bit of a, a nightmare trying to get all your particularly dynamics sorted out on the mix bus when you are sending stems out for uh, TV, film, record companies in general. So having just the one plugin to, to worry about to get me close and it has the side chain option should I have to send out stems then uh, that, that's great that's a win isn't it so ultimately this plugin is really flexible you can dial in the right sound reasonably quickly and you don't need to faff about with multiple plugins and multiple parameters to get something that's really close. So if you're a mix engineer or a music producer or even a mastering engineer who just wants to get something out quickly, then you could use this plugin for that. It, you know, if more so probably a mix engineer because I am a mix engineer. So I, the way I'm thinking I would use this is just really quickly get um, a good level with minimal processing out to the client so that they can listen and compare to commercial tracks um, and uh, give me the all clear for the mix. So this is a great contender to sit on your mix bus, really. Coupled with the idea that with the presets coming in the future from various mixing engineers, music producers with their own signature tone. So if you have a favourite out there and um, they happen to release a preset for the God Particle, then you're going to be probably 50% of the way there to getting a, a sound close to theirs. Uh, all dependent on the condition of the recorded tracks, of course. For speed, you can't really beat it. Uh, it's really easy, intuitive to use. Even if you're a beginner, uh, the various sections of the plugin make it really easy to navigate. So I found it really easy to set up. The only issue for me was it just sounds a bit dark. I just couldn't quite get the high end sound that I like, which is easily sorted out by just uh, adding a, a clean sounding EQ to the front of it. You wouldn't need to add it to the front because you've of the limiting, the limiter. Um, if you start adding plugins after the God Particle, then the, you're going to run the risk of getting the clipping lights, the red lights on your master output. For me, I think what I will do probably is actually consider this more as a sweetening tool. So I may add this um, in place of the current limiters that I'm using on my master bus or my mix bus. So instead of the L2 or instead of the Xenon, then I might try this and use this for the limiting capabilities. Also, then I've got the option to add that depth, that width and depth and sheen that I was missing from the plugins that I'm currently using on the mix bus. I think it's really useful and flexible plugin. You can use it in, t in very small amounts or you can use it full on as we have done today. I also think it's, it'll suit all genres of music. It was processing really cleanly, so I think it would be suited to everything, really, from rock and pop through to jazz and classical music. At the end of the day, you've got to use your ears and you can use as little or as much of this plugin as you need just to get you through the final stages of the mix and get something sounding as close to pro as possible. Remember too that it's flexible. You don't have to use this on the mix bus. You can use it on your group buses or your auxiliaries. You could even use it on individual tracks if you wanted to. So you're not just limited to, excuse the pun, not just limited to the mix bus. So that's it on the God Particle. If you want to hear me talk even more about EQ plugins, then you can check out this video on screen now. And then if you want to hear me talk even more about EQ, compression and using effects, then you can check out the link in the description to my Mixing Essentials course that's on sale at the Pro Mix Academy. That's all from me and I'll see you in the next video.